So when I'm stretching a Harley fender, particularly a front fender, I like to cut it up past this flange because they have a rounded edge here and then you have a contour or a rounded edge here and you don't want to try and just scab something on to the base of this because you'll have a gap so I cut this off and then I'll take you know however long I want to stretch it off of the donor fender so in this case I got um, I'm gonna take off two inches off of this one that'll get me into that flange there and then uh, when I cut this one I'll have some flange I like to use these ultra thin um, cutoff wheels they're made by Makita you can see the DeWalt ones they're a little thicker but DeWalt one or DeWalt makes a uh, I think this is a 45 thousandths uh, I don't remember, but this one's a 35 thousandths. I like to keep them thin because I like to get real accurate cuts. So here we go, I'm gonna chop this up. So when you're cutting these, you wanna make your cuts as straight as possible. And that way you'll get a better tack weld when you're welding it too. So, I'm going to save this and I'll have a 2 inch extension for another fender. It's no mystery why they call these things tins. They're thin as shit. When I'm doing this, I basically just deburr the metal. Because this shit's already thin enough and it's hard enough to weld, so I just take the shavings off. So I want to share with you like a technique that I've been doing for a while to get these types of welds on this super thin sheet metal. And I'm going to try to explain this the best that I can. I like to get the wire as close as possible to the gap and then as I pull the trigger at the same time, I roll it, roll it into it, kind of push it like this. Try it again. You get a solid penetrated butt weld. So I like to weld these on the inside also, all the way around. Go over the outside, make sure there's no pinholes. Grind it down. Weld up some pinholes if there is any. But that's how I like to stretch a fender. Now I'll roll this 
in for another flange. So I did a relief cut right here and then I rolled that edge and then I'll end up tacking it here and I'll roll it in some more and then I'll trim it uh, to match this other flange here. And that's it. Grind it smooth. Do some body work, maybe a little bit of filler. Also going to shave these off, weld them, put a little filler down there, finish it out real nice. So here's the flange that I made. There's a re the reason why I'm using all these cordless tools and, and uh, electrical tools right now is because I don't want my air compressors to kick on because it's like midnight. My neighbors will hate me.
So I'm really roughing the surface up so I can put some filler down, some kitty hair, sand it smooth. So if you're doing this at home, don't let this part of this scare you or deter you from, from trying it. If this is your first time doing this, um, this isn't my first time doing this. I've done a lot of these and more intricate ones too, but uh, I could probably actually get away with putting an epoxy primer on this and then a heavy 2K primer and block sanding it out and it'll look really nice. But if you're doing it, if you're doing this at home and it's like your first or your second one, uh, just plan on using some body filler. I'm gonna use some right here and right here is not a big deal. I sanded, I sanded this by hand with an 80 grit to get it ready to take it to take the fillers, and then I'll I'll sand that out and then I'll primer the shit out of this. So it'll look good. And like I said, don't let it deter you. Just plan on using some fillers. Well, there you have it. Smooth and shaved uh, rivets. Stretch fender, ready for primer. Um, one more block sand, and then ready for paint.